Now esters are more complicated because we probably need a catalyst. Right. Let's think about, say, the, uh, this reaction. Now, if we just had the, reaction, the reagents as I've written them, we would probably predict no reaction because there's no catalyst. Now, in these reactions, we can usually use either an acid or a base catalyst. So let's say that we've got an acid catalyst. Maybe sulfuric acid as an acid catalyst. Now this is going to be a much more complicated reaction, although you might have already seen this in the second language book. So let's see if we can show the mechanism here. Well, you did really well with that mechanism, too. It looks like you really made a lot of progress already on your own on these reactions. That's good. We'll be able to go through this a lot faster. All I have to suggest here are just some technicalities again. It's a little bit better to write the structure of sulfuric acid like this, to write the full structure of the sulfuric acid out, and then we can show this here. So we first have to protonate the oxygen. That helps this reaction to, to get going here. Then you did a proton transfer between the nucleophile and the leaving group. So that was good that you saw that, we need, uh, that it was helpful to do that. Then the leaving group left. Now, this is the point where I said people tend to get confused about who the leaving group is. At this point, some people confusedly kick this off. Well, that wouldn't make sense. Or some people kick this off. Well, that wouldn't make sense because this was the carbonyl oxygen. So it's good that you saw that this was going to be the L group over here. I guess I was sloppy here and I didn't even say what this R group was over here. But this is just some leaving group. Then we got this. And then we had to do a deprotonation step at the end. So it looks like you've already made some really good progress on this reaction. What type of functional group did we start with here? That's right. And what type of functional group did we end up with? An ester. An ester. That's right. So this was a case where instead of moving up or down in the table, we moved, I don't know, horizontally. We moved from one ester to another. But this is an important type of reaction. This is called transesterification, because it's going from across from one ester to another ester. Transesterification. But more important than the name is just understanding that the, the reaction fits into our general format here. We already seem pretty comfortable with this. Should we go through the base catalyzed, or do you think you're already on top of that? I think that might be the 
Okay, so let's go through the base catalyzed reaction. And in some ways that's simpler, and in some ways that's harder. Well, now when we're going to use a base, a good approach is to use a base that's the conjugate of our nucleophile. So let's use ethoxide as our base, since our nucleophile is the ethanol. We might as well use a base that's similar to the nucleophile. That way we don't need to worry about competition between the nucleophile and the base. Well, that's a good start. And we just, uh, the simplest thing is just to have the base go in and attack. That's right. All right. What's the other product from that step? Oh, well, that's excellent. Last time you said you were had, having trouble understanding the second language book, but uh, you must have picked this up from somewhere. It looks like you made some good progress in a lot of uh, these reactions. That's good. So the ethoxide attacks, and now we're going to reform the carbonyl. Now this should make us a little bit uncomfortable. Again, the key thing here is not to lose track of who the leaving group is. This is not the leaving group. This was the nucleophile. This is not the leaving group. This was the carbonyl oxygen. This is the leaving group over here. We should have identified that at, at the beginning so we don't lose track of who the leaving group is at this step. Now, this should make us uncomfortable because in the past, we usually have not accepted neutral oxygens as leaving groups. We usually did not allow ourselves to form a negative oxygen as a leaving group. However, it turns out that at this point of the class, there are a bunch of exceptions to that, cases where it's acceptable to have a neutral oxygen forming a negative oxygen as the leaving group, as long as you have a good reason. Well, our good reason here is reforming the carbonyl. Remember that nature likes reforming the carbonyl, so we're allowed to do things that we might not have done last semester. In order to reform the carbonyl, we're allowed to kick off this neutral oxygen. I'm sorry, yeah. So, and when it gets kicked off, it becomes negative. It was neutral before it left, and it's negative after it leaves. So this is not something you should use willy-nilly as a leaving group, but in certain situations now we're seeing that it's acceptable to use it as a leaving group. Of course, it would be even better if we could have protonated this first, but you can't do that under basic conditions. It's good that you didn't try to protonate this. We're not going to be able to protonate something under basic conditions, so we're going to have to accept that it's just going to have a negative charge when it leaves. All right, that's very good. Then as the last step, it's possible that you might show this deprotonating the ethanol to regenerate the ethoxide. I, I, that's uh, a technicality No, I, I don't think that's too important. All right, but uh, you already understood the basic reaction here. Maybe rather than thinking of this as base catalyzed, it's better just to think of it as a reaction under basic conditions, because it's a little bit hard to see how this is catalyzed. But we can see this is under basic conditions. And we use a base that's the conjugate, and we basically would use this base in this solvent, so they don't compete with each other. And again, this would be transesterification. This would be transesterification under basic conditions, because we produced one ester out of another ester. 